Okay, this review will be on the 1975 American League champion Boston Red Sox. Let's get right into what we see from their offense. This um, this breakdown is going to get a little bit involved here because there is a lot of um, platoons and mixing and matching with the um, 1975 Red Sox lineup according to the Stratomatic book. So I'm going to try to break this down in um, a as clear and concise manner as I can. Um, First, let's take a look at the one-two combination against right-handed pitching. According to the Stratomatic book, um, we had Cecil Cooper at DH leading off against righties and playing second base against right-handed pitching and batting second was Denny Doyle. So let's get started with their on-base chances, obviously against right-handed pitching. You see those numbers right there. So let's move on to the one-two combination in the lineup against left-handed pitching where we have Juan Benitez playing left field and leading off and Doug Griffin playing second base and batting second. This is against left-handed pitching. So you see those on-base numbers right there. Um, The numbers out of Doyle and Griffin, your second base platoon, and also uh, platooning uh, when it comes to hitting second in the order, both of those numbers come in... um, way too low for uh, my liking. Now let's um, break down the meat of the Red Sox order. And once again, there was a lot of changes depending on whether they play or where they hit in the lineup. For example, let's first take a look at Carl Yastrzemski. The everyday first baseman, the Stratomatic book has him hitting third against right-handed pitching, and they have him hitting sixth against left-handed pitching. And let's take a look at Yastrzemski's hits with runner advancement. And you could see it uh, wasn't... um, one of Yastrzemski's uh, best Stratomatic cards. Um, Obviously, those numbers can go up a little bit uh, depending on ballpark effect, hits and home runs, but those numbers are definitely down. Um, Now let's take a look at Fred Lynn, uh, the everyday center fielder. Uh, Fred Lynn would hit cleanup against righties, and he would hit fifth against lefties. And you see Fred Lynn's hits with multiple base advancement by a base runner. Um, This was obviously Fred Lynn's uh, rookie year, and this was the first of what would be uh, many very good uh, Stratomatic cards out of uh, Fred Lynn. So you see those numbers are um, real solid, um, especially against right-handed pitching. That is um, very good production out of uh, Fred Lynn. Now let's take a look at uh, Jim Rice versus left-handed pitching. According to the Stratomatic book, he would hit cleanup and DH, and versus right-handers, he would hit fifth and play left field, and you see Jim Rice's hits with multiple base advancement. So you got decent production out of Jim Rice. Now, I'm going to break down two more players for you, and this is really, to me, what really makes this 75 Red Sox lineup go. These are... um, Um, two cards which uh, really jumped out at me. Um, First, I'm going to give you the everyday right fielder, Dwight Evans. Now, Dwight Evans, according to the Stratomatic book, would hit third against left-handed pitching, and he hits seventh against right-handed pitching. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you Jim Rice's, or excuse me, Dwight Evans' numbers against left-handed pitching. I'm going to show you his on-base chances and his hits with multiple base advancement. And you could see those are just, I mean, Dwight Evans just eats left-handed pitching alive uh, in 1975. Those are just terrific numbers. And I'm also going to show you the catcher, Carlton Fisk. I'm going to show you all of his numbers. And this is really what makes this lineup go uh, for me. You see um, all of Carlton Fist numbers, his on-base chances, and his hits with multiple base advancement. And just one side note, Carlton Fist, let's see, according to the Stratomatic book, he hits seventh versus right-handed pitching, and he hits, or excuse me, he hits seventh against left-handed pitching, and he hits sixth against right-handed pitching. So look at those numbers and just realize that's a guy who, according to the Stratomatic book, hits six or seven in the lineup. Those are just terrific numbers out of a guy who you have hitting in that part of the lineup. So if we were to look at the 
75 Red Sox offense as a whole, um, you're going to see that they grade out at a very, very good score of a 4.2 out of five. Um, they didn't get a great score when it comes to um, on base percentage, uh, but I do like the middle of the order, depending on what combo you are playing. And I really, really like the righty lefty mix in this lineup, even though the lineup changes depending on whether you're facing a lefty or a righty. If you were to just break down the core guys, the guys who play every day, Carl Yastrzemski, Fred Lynn, Jim Rice, Carlton Fiss, Dwight Evans, all of those cards are very easy to play with. Um, you get good production throughout the lineup. Even though I know Carl Yastrzemski's hits with multiple base advancement to me are actually shockingly low. Um, when I looked at this card, I had to do a double take looking at it. Um, Yastrzemski's game in 1975 on a Stratomatic card was more geared towards just being on base a lot. Uh, however, overall, um, I don't have a lot of issues with this offense, um, and that comes out in their score of a 4.2 out of 5. Now, let's break down the um, defense. As always, I'm going to start with the middle infield. And really, you have nothing to complain about, no matter what combination you're playing at second base. And obviously, Rick Burleson was the everyday shortstop. You got nothing to complain about when you've got all twos up the middle. Um, so I gave the middle infield defense an excellent score of a four out of five. Now let's take a look at the outfield defense. I'm going to show you all the combos that you have there. Either you have Jim Rice or Juan Benitez in left. And obviously you got Fred Lynn as the everyday center fielder. And you've got Dwight Evans as the everyday right fielder. And when you only have one three, and especially when the three is in a corner outfield spot and you've got a one in center and the other corner outfield spot is also a one. Once again, you really don't have a lot to complain about. Um, I'm not crazy about threes in the outfield, but at least it is just the one three. I gave the outfield defense, again, uh, excellent score of a four out of five. Now let's take a look at the E ratings on the um, 1975 um Red Sox and let's stay in the outfield. And even when you look at the left field combination with Rice and Beniquez, yes, both of them are threes, but the E ratings in the outfield, there's really nothing to balk at right there. Um, you look at the E ratings in the middle infield defense. This is where you run into a little bit of a problem. Um, and then you look at the E ratings in the corner infield spots, uh, third base and first base. This is actually one of the better combos I've come across since I started doing these videos. So I came out at an overall E rating score of a four out of five. And just to give you a little insight of how I came to that score, I gave the outfield E rating grade a five out of five. Middle infield was just average two and a half out of five. And the corner infield, I gave a four and a half out of five. So if you average, if you're to average all of that out, that's how I come out with the E rating score of a four out of five. So the 1975 Red Sox defense checks out very well. That comes out at a score of a four out of five. Now let's break down the Red Sox Starting rotation from 1975. Let's get started with the ace, Louis Tiant. Uh, you see his on-base chances right there. Um, this is a card that I come across a lot in Stratomatic um, when you look at aces, where you say, okay, you know, it's it's a good card, but it's not necessarily a card that you would say is a complete shutdown, lockdown starting pitcher. But these cards, lots of times, I tend to land on a score of a four out of five, and I feel good about that uh, rating when it comes to uh, Louis Tiant. This is a solid card um, out of Louis Tiant, so I feel good about the four out of five rating. Now let's take a look at the starting rotation depth. I'm going to show you the numbers for Rick Wise, Bill Lee, and Reggie Cleveland. You see all those numbers check out well above average. The only issue that I have here is... Um, is with uh, Reggie Cleveland. Um, he has a lot of power on his card against right-handed hitters, so I'm not particularly crazy about that. But if I was to look at the 75 Red Sox starting rotation overall, I really don't have any major issues 
with the starting rotation depth. Uh, none of these cards are really going to make or break you. Um, these are all just what you would call good cards. Um, yes, they, they are hittable cards, but they are at the same time guys who could go out and give you two or three runs in seven innings pitch. So overall, I gave the Red Sox starting rotation depth a score of a four out of five. So the 1975 Red Sox starting rotation grades out as a four out of five. Now let's get into the 75 Red Sox bullpen. Um, first, I'm going to break down the closer from that year, Dick Drago. Uh, he had 15 saves on the year, and you see his on-base chances right there. Um, this is a card when you look at it, you look at it and you don't say, okay, this is my closer no matter what. I actually look at Dick Drago as more of a guy that you use as a righty to get righties out. But if this is a guy that you're counting on to close games, then I have to say that this is no better than just an average card. So Dick Drago grades out at a two and a half out of five. Now let's look at the Red Sox bullpen depth. I'm going to, uh, First, get started by showing you two guys, left-handed pitcher Jim Burton and right-handed pitcher Jim Willoughby. And you see those numbers right there. Um, Willoughby's numbers versus right-handed batters looks good on the surface. But once again, we run into the issue where there are a number of power opportunities against left-handed hitting. So that's an issue that you have out of the bullpen and Jim Burton's numbers don't necessarily jump out at you. So a little bit of an issue there with the bullpen. Now I'm going to show you one more guy. Um, and this is really a very interesting option when you do play with the, um, 1975 Red Sox. Um, Roger Murray Torres, who had 16 starts that year, but he also has relief on his Stratomatic card. He was a left-handed pitcher. I'm going to show you his on-base chances right now. This is a guy who I would strongly suggest using in a prominent role out of your bullpen if you find yourself playing with the 1975 Red Sox. And this was a card where I was breaking it down, where I was saying, okay, well, this is really a very interesting option out of the bullpen because if you look at his number left-handed batting and you look at Dick Drago's numbers versus right-handed batting there are some options here for mixing and matching once again it just has to be managed properly but with all that said as I looked at all the cards from the Red Sox bullpen nothing pops out at you nothing really says where wow this is a good bullpen um, at best, I would just call this an average bullpen. So once again, I landed on a score of a two and a half out of five for bullpen depth. So the overall bullpen just grades out as average. So they score a two and a half out of five. So if we would appeal everything back and look at the 1975 Red Sox as a whole, you're going to see that they grade out at a 3.7 out of five, which is actually one of the more disappointing scores that I've come across since I started doing these videos. This was a team where when I first sat down to look at all the cards and start writing down my grades, I thought that this would easily be a team that would score a four or higher. Um, however, I guess since it's been a while since I actually sat down with 1975 Red Sox, I kind of forgotten just how many issues that this team had with the bullpen. And you could see that is really, really what dragged down the 75 Red Sox overall score. Um, so that's my grade on the 1975 Red Sox. They get a 3.7 out of 5. I thank you all for watching, and my next video, I'm going to stay in the decade of the 1970s and do a review on the 78 World Series champion, New York Yankees. Have a good day, everyone.